I was looking through the subreddit of Flutter Dev and I came across this thread that says clean code. How often do you do the clean code and if there's any resources for this clean code? And then I was a little bit flashed back through the days of me being a software developer working in a Flutter project. So I thought maybe I should create a video and this video is about five things that I've learned as a software developer working on the Flutter project. Number one, clean code. Have you seen a file that is more than a thousand lines of code? And then when you look at a code, you get slightly angry and then you get angrier and angrier and angrier and you'll be like, what the fuck is this shit? And this is why clean code is very important. And that's when I learned how to write clean code. I can go on and on about clean code, but basically you have to not compromise the readability of your code to the speed or laziness that you want. If you see something that you can, you know, refactor, then refactor it. There's this like boy scout rule where leave the place cleaner where you have seen it. Leave the place cleaner. Leave the place cleaner than before. Leave the place cleaner than before. Yes, somewhere along those lines. This is because when you want to debug your app or your project and then it will bite you in the ass because you have no idea what the F freaking person or the code means. If you don't know where to start, you can go to this website called refactoring.guru. I'm not sponsored, but then that website is full of resources for you to learn how to refactor code, learn design patterns, and just make your developer experience better for you and for others. I will highly recommend for you coders out there and honestly, for you spaghetti dirty coders, it will make your life cleaner. So the second thing is don't reinvent the wheel unless that's the last resort. Flutter back in the days when it was in beta, oh my god, the amount of libraries, articles and videos on how to do stuff was very small. This small. I, could, I, I literally can calculate. But what I mean by that is there wasn't a lot of help except for maybe GitHub issues where the developers will reply. And then Stack Overflow, it might be outdated because Flutter Beta was just moving very fast. Now there's tons of libraries, videos, and articles to explain on how to do different stuff, the common use cases and such. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel because most of the time you're trying to create an, an app as fast as possible. So you don't need to spend the time creating a library unless you really need it. You can just fork a library and manipulate the different functions that you require. I, I think that's the most that you can do. Unless there's a specific use case that no one has ever done, then yeah, create a package and then release it to the world. So developers like us can also contribute. And the thing is, for example, you want to create a Flutter SDK for Firestore. If you want to create from scratch, good luck. If you can, get hired from Google. But other than that, there are developers who maintain some of the official packages, but not everything. And I think it's more than stable enough unless there's a service that has a Dart SDK and that is when it is not updated and that's where you have to, you know, work around. But in the end, I think there is a lot of resources for you to use packages, articles, and videos. So don't reinvent the wheel. Number three, automate your boring stuff. If you're a software developer, you know that by coding out script and such, it can enhance your experience as a developer. So I have an experience as a developer where I have to do internalization or basically I have to translate the different text inside the app. And 
I tell you, it is boring. And the process and doing the internalization of the text in the app goes something like this. You have a text and then you have to put into like the internalization folder or file. And then at the same time, you have to create a variable name. And then after that, you put the text into a translator that gives out a certain file formatted text. And then you have to insert it into the file. And then you have to create another variable name in another file so that these two can link up. So if the user wants to have the text in Mandarin, then or Chinese, then it's easier because you have the different translations basically. So I saw that opportunity to create a script. I did semi automated because I, I did not work out on the translator API, but that's okay. I then was able to focus on the problems that require solving, not the boring stuff. And as software developers, you have the tools and knowledge to know how to create a script. You can Google it and whatnot. So all of these things actually really helps you to get a good developer experience. You are supposed to focus on the important problems to be solved, not the boring stuff. So automate. Other than automating like internalization, you can also automate the deployment of your app. So you have like CI and CD or continuous integration and continuous development that helps you automate your testing and also your deployment for your app in iOS and Android and whatsoever. So yeah, make use of these tools to just help you do the things that bores you. The fourth thing is always extract your UI widget into smaller widgets. Have you seen a file that has a thousand line of code? Well, I did and it's horrendous because there is no reason where you need to have a thousand lines of code. I think you don't need that much depression inside your life. So what you need to do is to refactor it into smaller, smaller widgets. And with the smaller widgets, you can put inside another file so that you're able to, you know, refer back and forth on the different widgets that make up, for example, the whole view of a page. So an example is that imagine your dictionary squeezed into one page. You know how freaking big the dictionary page will be? It's horrendous. And, and if you want to look up on a word, <laughs> You probably need a lot of space in order for do that. So try to structure or architect your UI widgets like a page, you know, so you are able to reference when you need to or when you want to reuse it. This is a long line of clean code, but clean code is really, really very fundamental. Extracting your widget into smaller UI widgets, it's something above that. So yeah, that's why I want to stress it. And lastly, Document, document, document. Documentation is why Flutter is awesome. New developers who tries to learn Flutter says that the Flutter documentation is great because it helps the new people understand how to implement certain stuff, why it's implemented certain stuff and such. If you have a widget that's very clean, very, very clean, but nobody understands why you do it or how you do it. Is that a good widget? Not really, because sometimes people want to change the widget that you have created or whatsoever. And that's why I feel documentation is very, very good on how to use your project. You know, Flutter makes it really easy for you to document stuff. Other than that, also give examples on how to use your widget, because if you implement it, People don't know there's a parameter that really, really helps in how to get your widget up and running, you know? So all of this documentation really helps. And if someone new came in on board into the tech team, they see the documentation, they understand, they love it, great. But most of the time they will ask you questions. Why is this like this? How is this like this? And then if you don't document what happened during that process of questioning and answer, right? then the same questions are going to be asked. So document every time you see something that doesn't make sense. Is this part of clean code? No, clean code is basically if someone understands that code or line of code, right? You don't have to document. 
document is basically just explaining how to use a widget, why you have to do this, and what is the different flow of maybe your business logic or the flow of an app, that kind of thing. So document really helps. If you were to look at Flutter's documentation, you could say, I could say that it is maybe 40 to 30% of documentation and the rest are just the code itself. So documentation is a big fundamental part of having a good developer experience. All right, that's it. In summary, don't have to reinvent the wheel unless, unless that's the last resort or necessary. You can always compromise because I feel that if you want to reinvent the wheel, then there's something that you can compromise. And to have a better developer experience, learn clean code in refactoring.guru. Refactor your big, huge widgets into smaller, smaller widgets. And lastly, learn the clean code and design patterns. You can go to the website refactoring.guru and also refactor your smaller widgets with documentation so that people understand. And lastly, if you don't like the boring stuff, please automate it. So that's it. Thank you for listening. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want more of this. I'll probably do a video on some clean code practices that I've done personally and helped me. And lastly, if you have any other tips or lessons learned, put it in the comment down below. And that's it. Stay safe. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.